do you here's what i'm thinking at some point after you kind of introduce me into yep. the thing right i was gonna pull out a beer oh, and mother open it hang and on, say, hang hey, on. Hey, i'm gonna get my beer yeah okay okay good Well, welcome into another episode of Suds with Luds. Uh, we are officially back off of uh, vacation. I've been working all summer, and um, so I got a lot of catching up to do. And uh, there's probably nobody better to catch up with than an icon in the sports industry here in the Metroplex, uh, John Radigan. Rads, <laughs> how you doing? You got a big smile on your face. Things must be going good. Yeah. Well, when when you started talking about the icon, I was starting to look around like, who the, who the hell is he talking about? But uh, yeah, it's it's great, you know, Luds. It's great to see you again and to chat with you again. And I'm I'm anxious. Uh, you know, we'll have a chance here to talk a little hockey. I mean, I haven't been on uh, any of the hockey shows as I know you haven't for a while over at Bally. So uh, I've definitely missed that and missed hanging out with you. So yeah, thanks for having me on Suds with well, Luds. It wasn't called Bally's when I was there, so I was all confused when it did start switching. I thought, Jesus, everything's gone out of Texas and stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's been some changes, and I'm I'm super happy to have you yeah. on. I'm I'm a little disappointed though. You you made your debut on the Dub Network, uh, all of our podcasts here, not with me, but with Nate and Isaiah. And so I was like, well, what the hell yeah. are you cheating on me? But you guys go way back, don't you? Yeah. I think- we, we go way back too, not a hell of a lot farther than you and I go back, uh, because you know we go back to when the stars arrived in town. So I probably go a little further back with Nate. But look, look, lads, you know I'm a freaking bandwagon guy, and it looks like the Cowboys are going to be pretty good. So I thought, well, let me jump on this damn bandwagon early. So I got on there before. Uh, well, good thing I got on there before that that first game, because I promise you that thing's full now. Well, speaking of good teams, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll get into some Dallas Stars stuff. So I, I think you're going to be able to jump on their bandwagon, too. I mean, I, we, we know they're an exciting, yeah, I agree. a real exciting team. Um, yeah. And you know how the sports fans are here as far as the Dallas Stars goes. So I think they're going to be excited. I, I guess in a way I was kind of I was expecting maybe a little bit more uh, movement or changes in the offseason. But that just tells you that. Management are, are very happy and comfortable for what they have. But anyway, let, let's start with your 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 Bally's. You, you mentioned Bally's earlier, so can, can you give us an update? Uh, I have no idea, and maybe you know. I mean, um, what's going on, and what do you think's going to happen with the Dallas Stars? Because they were, I mean, is that thing cool? Is that thing working, or how much do you know about all that? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe, uh, and and it is they're in bankruptcy court. Uh, Bally is, and and it's actually their parent company not Bally's, but it's their parent company that's in bankruptcy court, and they're fighting through it every day with every intention of making it through bankruptcy court and continuing this network in the same way that it has always been. In the short term, they're doing everything they can to do that as well, and that will include Dallas Stars hockey games this season, and and for that matter, Dallas Mavericks games this season. They have you know, assured the teams they have enough money through the bankruptcy process to pay for all of the team's rights that Bally owes them on a you know periodic basis. I know with the Rangers, there are four payments throughout the course of a season, probably about the same with the Stars. So they know they have enough money to do that, and they're going to continue to do that with the hopes that they'll emerge from bankruptcy a much stronger company financially, and they will be able to then probably make it um, a much more certain right thing in the future as Bally's slash Fox always was in the past. So uh, two things on that. Has every every team, every sports team that is involved with Bally's, are they all in the same situation or are there just only certain clubs and certain demographics that are in this situation? Every Bally team is, and a few of them uh, kind of lost their fight with Bally uh, and, you know, I, I don't understand bankruptcy, so I don't know how, but like the San Diego Padres, for example, were on Bally, and then in the middle of the summer, it went away, uh, and, and now MLB does the, their broadcasts, so... Um, I'm not really sure what happened there, but but all the everybody that ever was Bally 
pretty much still is, and they're all in the same boat right now until bankruptcy is settled. Do you trust that? And, and, and the reason I ask you that, if you're an owner uh, of a club that's in this situation, would you have a backup plan? Because the only reason I asked that is I, I thought I had heard last year after the hockey season was over that Dallas was maybe looking at having their own station or looking around for other stations. Do you think they need a backup plan or not? Before I get into all this heavy stuff, Lutz, I, I was told this was such a Oh, my good God. So I didn't I want have... to be the first one. You see, we just got to get you drinking oh, the right brand. God. There you go. I was, yeah, well, this is a good Canadian beer. We're talking hockey. I got a Canadian beer well, here. But anyway. Uh, Happy to mm. have you on the show, Rads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great to be I here. I got we've, the big uh, one, so, you know what I mean? I, get, I drink the 16 yeah. ounces. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that surprises <laughs> me, yeah. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, to answer that question, I believe all teams have a backup plan. And, I mean, obviously, it is only wise to. But here's what I tell everybody. Next, you know, because I'm, I'm assuming Bally is going to carry the stars all season long. That is every indication I'm getting from the people at Bally. Uh, and the few that I've talked to at the stars, for, as a matter of fact. So, uh, uh, but next year, I don't know what's going to happen after this bankruptcy is settled, right? But I, I do know this. Somebody will be broadcasting Dallas Stars hockey next season, right? Somebody will be broadcasting Texas Rangers and, and Dallas Mavericks next season. And I hope it's Pally. I think that I think that the crew that is trying to get them through bankruptcy, they have it together. The crew that owned them before, the the, the one that owned us between uh, you know, Fox and and this um, was not quite as together. But this crew, I think, knows what they're doing. They're sports people, and they know that this kind of regional sports network is a viable thing. And I believe they will. You know, if they're if they're able to emerge from bankruptcy, uh, you know, financially sound, I believe they'll make this thing very similar to what it was before. So does a does a hockey fan have to worry about? Uh, it being if it went someplace else, would they have to worry be in one of these app based kind of things or on their provider? Because that seems to be where a lot of things are going. What's your thoughts on all that? Yeah, I, I don't know a ton about that aspect of it, but I, I do know that everybody wants to have the uh, ability to what they say, let's stream these games, right? Everybody, it, it, Bally wants that too. They're working hard to make it what they call direct to consumer. So they want it to be something that the consumer can buy the game. Uh, any, you know, if you just like the stars, man, you can just pay for yeah. the subscription to the stars and Mavericks, same way, Rangers, same way, whatever. So that's what everybody wants. That's certainly what Bally wants. So I'll say this. I don't think the uh, streaming only um, option is extremely viable at this point for any of the pro teams. And I think all you need to look at is the Pac-12 and how that thing, you know, just plummeted because they were going to go with more of a streaming based network for the Pac-12 instead of games over the year and you just it's just it's at this point it's not viable that's not to say it won't be at some point in the future but at this point i think the stars will be on some network i hope it's bally uh in the future and there will be the option of streaming it but there will also be the option of watching it you know i mean i've watched you know everybody complains about bally and all that stuff i have it every day i have direct tv i'm out in the country anyway so uh, that's about the best service I can get because you know, there's no cable out here or anything. But uh, I have DirecTV. Bally's there. So get you DirecTV and you, you, you're going to always have Bally. You know? Well, we're, we're kind of similar. We're different on different sides of Texas, but I, I'm in I'm out in the hood here. So I'm a, I am out on Lake Louisville yeah. and uh, I, I'm not really I don't get to watch a ton, a ton of TV. And the, unfortunately for me, if I'm watching, it's about one o'clock in the morning. Um, some things don't change. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Pac-12. Yeah. I want to get before we get into what you're doing and how you're handling this whole thing. Your thoughts on Deion Sanders in Colorado, his football club. I mean, it is I I got. 
I got hooked. I, one day I was on, I don't know, Apple TV or whatever it was, and I watched his little, I think it was called Prime. Yeah. Is that what it was called? Um, yeah. I, I, got, yeah. I got hooked. I mean, I, I've always been a fan of his. I, I think he may be, a, everybody talks about Bo Jackson and guys like that. I think he may just be one of the best athletes yeah. on the planet. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, I love his motivational stuff. He seemed to speak from the heart. He seems to, uh, and I'm sure you've done things with him. Uh, your thoughts on Dion and, and what he's what he's bring, doing with the Colorado football team? Funny you mentioned that because my my son in law, uh, you know, has only been around us for a few, uh, really not even two full years yet. But uh, good good young man who's a huge sports fan, huge Dallas Stars fan. Anyway. We were watching Colorado's first game. He just says to me, hey, uh, do you know Dion? I go, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I, I just I was looking through my phone a few minutes later. There's a picture of you and me and Dion all arm in arm. And I think we might have been at Nancy Lieberman's um, event one year together. But um, anyway, I am like you a huge fan of Dion and a huge fan of what he's doing. And I got to be honest with you, I figured it would work. You know, there were so many naysayers when he was, you know, basically 86ing the entire team. Hey, not to say I didn't feel bad for those right. kids, right? They come to Colorado like, yeah, we're in Boulder. And Dion come in and says, yeah, none of you are good <laughs> enough for me. Get the heck out of here, you know? But he knew what he needed. He knew what he wanted. And then he went and got it. And it is pretty amazing that you can bring in, I think it's 58 See, new I kids thought it was 83. in one season. Did, where did I hear 83? Or or did he cut 83? Well, or, or, I, I don't know what it was. I know that only only nine stayed. Okay. Only nine and it, and it, scholarship it, and athletes And his son was stayed. one of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically his son wasn't there last year. He wasn't a scholarship athlete there last year. So, uh he, you know, he was one of the new that had to come in through the transfer portal or whatever. And what a player that oh, wow. kid is. Holy And he's moly. lighting it up. So wait, yeah. you mentioned the transport yeah. portal. I was talking to a couple guys this weekend. We, our U18 team, we had a, we had a tournament. Uh, uh, we started our season off, whatever you want to call it, uh, in Omaha this weekend. And so I was talking to one of the coaches, um, and that portal came up. And it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, these anybody can just get up and take off now. It's weird. I, I, first of all, I was always a guy and, and you were a scholarship athlete. You may agree with me on this. I was always a guy that thought there should be some way to pay college athletes because again, yes, you get a scholarship. Yes, you get a free education, but so many come from, you know, not uh, wealthy backgrounds. Whereas the demographics at most universities are such that the kids who are there their parents have a lot of money and these young guys are out there busting their butt playing hockey or football or basketball or baseball or track, whatever. And they can't afford to go get a pizza mm -hmm. because they're not allowed to work through the NCAA. They can't have an extra job and yeah, they got no money. So I always thought that the athletes should at least get some sort of stipend. So now you've got NIL. Holy crap. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't looking for them to get two, three, four million dollars a year <laughs> out of this deal, but you know, good, good for them. I mean, good for them if they can. Um, the transfer portal thing, I think, is also a much more fair to the athlete, right? The athlete was always in a situation, uh, unlike the coaches, where the athlete had to sit out at least a year if he transferred, whereas the coach could leave tomorrow and, you know, he could coach the next year at a new, new school for a much better deal. So I think the transfer portal uh, is a good thing that, in that it allows athletes an opportunity to get to the ne next school and play. Um, but it is it does make it confusing. And I will say this. I admire people who don't just because they didn't start their first year, don't just immediately get in the transfer portal. Right. right? Stick it out, man. Fight it out and, and, and earn your spot on the team. Everybody, so many of them are so entitled now. Fight for it. Have you had an opportunity to talk to coaches, what, what they feel about with the, with the portal as far as having, you know, having a good player, a young player maybe coming up and, or, or players that, are, you know, they're, they're, they're in the middle of the pack, but they, they have a place for them in the following season to just take off. Have, have you had a chance to, to talk to any of the coaches on their thoughts about it? Yeah, I actually talked to Sonny Dykes about this, and, you know, he's used it 
expertly at TCU. Obviously, they had that great year last year and took it all the way to the national championship game. Um, And then he was very active in the transfer portal again this year. And he believes it is just an absolute, uh, you know, I I don't want to say a godsend, but he likes it because when, when you are weak in an area, right, through graduation or through injury, you can address that area. You don't have to necessarily mm-hmm. wait for this 18-year-old kid to put his, his man weight on and get in the weight room and eat the right foods and all that and be ready to play. So it's definitely uh, given coaches an option to, as they always say, Luds, reload, right? You, you, you want to reload. You don't want to rebuild if you can help it. Yeah, it's the the the, re, the the word now. I think in the NHL is retool. So you know they're trying not to right. to, yeah. to talk about yeah. it and say we're we're stripping it down and we're starting all over, fans. And and you know the other thing is at least in yeah. the NHL. One of the worst places to be, I think, for clubs is that mushy middle because you're you're not getting early draft yeah. picks. You know you're getting mid mid round picks and. And, and I think that's where a lot of clubs are going, well, here we are. We're at that point. And, and you know, talking about team, I mean, I think Dallas is – they're looking at their window. You know, they're in that, that window where, you know, like a year ago, I, I think they felt that they were where they were at. And uh, they had a real good opportunity to get to the finals. It, it didn't work out. Um, and, and they're probably in that area. And it comes down to, you know, Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, Suter, you know, these guys that are – you know they're they're a little bit older and they're not the same as the 26 year olds and so um, you know they they didn't get any high round picks unless there were some moves and things like that made but but anyway um, you're you're um, t- so what what how is the situation with you now so wh- what do you do now um, to keep yourself busy while, while this is all going on. Yeah, it, it's been a weird uh, few months because what you know what Bally and again the the. the bankruptcy dictated that they basically had to transition me and uh and some of the other full-time on-air people most of our our watchers of this know dana larson and aaron hart again and then there were a few producers and they basically needed time to transition us from full-time employees to freelance employees and um so there was a period there now from july august september uh, we're still in it where we can't be on the air so it's just like, especially the way the Rangers are playing, you know, I'm always involved when the Ran- with the Rangers in the other season, right? And uh, the way they've been playing, although not lately, but it looks like they're turn- trending back in the right direction. But anyway, after the <laughs> season they've been having, it killed me. It killed me not to be on their games all the time, you know, because that's what we all uh, really enjoy. You remember from our stars days when the team is doing well, it's just so much fun to come to the, you know, the studio or to the rink or to the, or to the uh, stadium there, globe life. So uh, anyway, it's been tough, but um, then I'm uh, in the fall. Since I left stars, I have been uh, a part of the Oklahoma city thunder pre and post game show and I'll be back on the Thunder pre and post game show in the fall. And then, you know, I know Bally plans and I hope, uh, you know, that it'll all happen, that I'll be back on the st- uh, the, uh, the Rangers, I should say, in the spring. Um, again, it depends on bankruptcy, but um, over which none of my bosses at Bally have any control. I certainly have no control. So but that's the that's the plan going forward. And so it won't, you know, to a viewer, it won't look any uh different uh to my bank account <laughs> it'll look a little different because i gotta i gotta pay for my own health benefits for the first time in 40 years but that's fine you know? yeah but you're working out every day you're fine you're you're, you're i can tell you're oh, working out yeah, right now you're working yeah. your left arm yeah. out right now <laughs> it's all mm-hmm. good <laughs> got the tw- got the 12 ounce curls going but next time maybe i'll need to get the 16 yeah, ounces yeah i wanted to i wanted to go canadian this time i had to go canadian for the first that, that's lunch, good you know? I, I, i'm into some canadian beers mostly all the the molson products so uh kokanee some yeah, of those yeah. uh, so you got some free time on your hands yeah. a little bit more than you'd like but you have some free time i, I have yeah and that's one of the things that inspired me uh, to you know, j- jump in with the Dub Network. I, when you guys first started, um, you know, whenever that was, eight months, a year ago, whatever that was, I looked over there and I thought, oh, good God, Luds, you know, Nate. I've worked with both of them on on pre and post game shows forever. Derek Harper, I basically helped to train him when he was coming in, and now he's you know killing it as a broadcaster. And um, 
And I was like, you know, Menchie too. I mean, Menchie I've known forever. And I've, I've always tried to talk Menchie into coming over to Rangers live. He's funny. He's like, man, I don't want to have to sit and watch the whole game. And then when they talk yeah, about his head, his head, ADD his head pass. won't fit in the screen yeah. though. No, that's the thing. And his head might explode <laughs> if he has to yeah. watch all that, you know? So, uh, so anyway, but I love, I love everybody on the, on the dub network. And I thought, well, dang, I ought to, I had to look well, wait, into that. No, and then, no, well, hang you know, on, again, hang you know on, how that. So, so Nate's got a partner. He's got Isaiah. Menchie's Menchie, head only fits into one screen, so he can't get a partner. Har- right. Harp has yeah. got plenty of options, yeah. and you have some free time. So why aren't you just doing this with me every time we're doing a podcast then? Well, I'd love to do that, Luds. Let's do it. Let's make let's make that a date where oh. we can have some suds well, again like we always used well, to. Well, there you go. So you this know? is kind of like breaking yeah. news right now. So we can tune, you can tune in now and you mm-hmm. don't have to listen to me. We got John Radigan on here each time we do some. He'll, he'll actually ask some good questions. And so, and then we can get, we can do some crossover things. I'd love to see you get some kind of, uh, speaking of crossover things, I was going to, I was thinking about this as you were talking. I mean, you're good friends with Dion. Uh, you, you know, I don't know why you couldn't put a little call into Dion. Yeah, yeah. He might be a little busy yeah. right now, but. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he may be tough to get, but what? Not, why not? Hey, he, he, I'll, I'll send him the picture of go. the three there of us, go. and I'll say, Dion, you got. We got to reunite here on on the Suds with Luds. Yeah, program. just give us give so. us ten minutes. I mean, hey, five to ten minutes with Dion Sanders would be gold. It'd be worth anything else that we're doing here. So, uh, well, that that's uh, I promise you, though. great. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I I think that'd be great, Luds. I, I uh, I'm excited to talk a bunch of hockey with you. I am excited to talk hockey again. And, uh, and then of course, just hanging out with you. And I like, I love, I love the, um, the camaraderie that we always have. So like not when we're together doing all those games, we were doing 80 games a year. We talked a lot of stuff besides hockey. And, and I know, uh, I know in a forum like this, that is something that's very possible. And in fact, Here's one I wanted to bounce off you because this is somebody we talked about even back when we were uh, uh, together and your thoughts about him, you being a Wisconsin guy originally. What are your thoughts about what happened to O. Aaron Rodgers? <clears throat> well, uh, talk about bad timing. Um, I, I wow. was able to get dialed in uh, to hard knocks. And so I watched that. And I can tell you um, – from being from Wisconsin, and, and obviously all my friends are Packer. I mean, it's hard not to be. Most of them all have a tat, the Packer yeah. tattoo on their ass someplace. But so that you know, they're right. diehards. But right. th- there seemed to be when you talk to some of the fans, uh, my buddies, they were. I think they were getting a little wore out by. Again, I don't pay attention to what most players say and what the what little clips and sound bites they use all the time because you never know, you know, how those can be nip- manipulated. But. But they were getting a little wore out with maybe some of the comments that he made at times. And uh, I know that he wasn't happy. Uh, something about during the draft, maybe when they, 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 didn't, they didn't draft a receiver that he was looking for and some of the guys that didn't come back. But um, when, I, when I went through that hard knocks thing, and again, I think we all know that Aaron Rodgers knows that he was on a very big show. And, you know, so he was probably on his best behavior, yeah. um, <clears throat> things like that. But it sure looked like he was uh, trying to help and teach and everything that I saw and be a good teammate at that time. Um, and the hype in New York was uh, deservedly unbelievable because he still is a great quarterback. Um, but what happened the other night? I mean, could from here you could feel the wind just go out of every New York Jet fan. Oh, you know. And did you see the? Did you see the, the? I'm sure you have. You're a sports guy. You saw that where they highlighted his his calf with the circle around it, and and you see yeah. it pop. Yeah. And and what happens when you tear your Achilles? It rolls yeah. up, and and and. But yeah. anyway, you when you watch that in slow mo, immediately you know. And I think he knew when he kind of started to get up and sat down and rolled over. So I think it's devastating to those fans and and all the work. And um, I saw their owner on one of the episodes and. He was all hyped up and all this other kind of stuff. So I feel for him. Uh, but since we're here in Texas, I, I don't. I don't think that's the general sentiment around to the st- around the DFW market. No, no, no. Of course not. Now again, though, how old were you, Luds? Were you thirty-eight when when you I stopped? I was thirty-nine. Playing? Thirty-nine, 37? going on forty. When I, yep, yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's right exactly. at his age, yep. right? He's, he's going to be, he'll be 40 in December. And I was thinking about that. It's just like, at, cause you know, we've seen so many hits in football and certainly hockey too, but so many hits in football, so much worse than that. I mean, it didn't, you know, it didn't look like the kind of hit that would yeah. end a season. Uh, but at, at some point, man, the body starts to give right. out. Well, I, I think you're, and it sounds like, well, didn't he have a shaman and he was doing some going for the ayahuasca and all this other kind of stuff that I heard him talking about. Yeah. Um, he should, maybe yeah. should have been working the other end of his body. The, the head space is cleared up, I guess. But, 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 you yeah. know, the other thing is, it's yeah. like, I, I, I don't know uh, again uh, that you he could be walking down the street and have that happen to his Achilles, right? He could step off a curb and that would happen there too. So, um, you know, I don't know if it's a fluke thing, but you can just tell the way that his, his toe went down and, and it got stretched out. Um, so I don't know if that's an age thing, if it matters how old you are, because we know guys that, and, you know, they're younger guys that have had that same thing happen. So I just think uh, it was it sure. was part of being an NFL player. And But um, I, I'm sure when he goes to bed at night, he'll take a peek at his uh, bank account and his paycheck. And, you know, it's it's going to be OK. Yeah, he's going to make fifty million. Uh, so to, to to rehab his Achilles, so yeah. that's okay. yeah. You know, it's funny. That's like okay. I, I I've been texting back and forth a couple times now with Joe uh, Pavelski, and so I think uh, Joe's going to come on if he's got some time to do it. And I and I look at those kind of players. And speaking uh, talking about the stars, I, I look at Joe, and I think the great players in any sport. Are, are so committed to taking care of their bodies and very unlike what, what we probably were, I know we were when we played, uh, we found different ways to get around it. And I don't think we, you know, with all the nutrition and all that kind of stuff. And, and it reminds me of Joe and Joe's just going to be 40 years old. And so he's in that same thing, but he takes care of himself. Um, you know, these guys play the game, at least Joda. I mean, he plays the game with his head. I mean, he's such a smart, the hockey sense from Pavelski. I'm, I'm really excited to see um, where he is this year. Um, he, he's a big pivotal piece to that, to that number one line, which I'm sure they'll be together again. But I look at those guys and I have such admiration for them, the way that they take care of themselves, because I can tell you, uh, and I've told this story before, and I don't know if you've heard it, but I remember uh, three, four, five years ago, whatever it was, and we were in getting off the plane in Anaheim, and there was a bunch of the younger guys, and they were they were down by the concierge. You know, you get your keys when you come in, and I had ran upstairs and um, changed and put your jeans on and stuff, and was hoping to meet Grazer for a couple beers or something like that. Uh, you know, you land four o'clock, let's have a couple beers, and we'll have dinner. Uh, and they, when I anyway, I came back downstairs, and they were still standing around the concierge. And I walked up to him and I said, "Hey, you guys want to know where to go? I mean, what are you looking for? You want a couple beers? Like this kind of place? You want a, you know, this kind of place? You want you want some entertainment?" And they kind of looked at each other. They didn't say nothing to me. They looked at each other and they turned around and they said. Uh, no, we're looking for the closest Whole Foods. And I was like, what? We're looking for the closest. <laughs> I never heard of that bar, but that must be a good bar. But but it but it just it just told me at the time, I'm like, yeah, that, that's who they are, though. I mean, they take care of themselves. They put good things yeah. in, in their body and, and all that. And that's why they play so long. I mean, uh, God bless them. And, and they they deserve the money that they're getting because they put a lot of time in and work and, and train and everything. I'm sure they take care of themselves in the summer better than we ever did. Um, and I'm sure Aaron Rodgers yeah. is that kind of guy, too. I think all these satellites are. I mean, you, you, you know more of the Cowboys, and so I'm, I'm assuming these guys are not the same guys. Um, they aren't the Nate Newtons of the of the '90s today. No, nope. no, nope. not not at all. But your, your your hockey guys, they were looking beer. We're going to get some pomegranate yeah. Yeah. juice and some grains. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a different it's a different animal. And and I, I always love your stories about you know like a a Zuby. You know, Zubov, who you said one time he's got a cigarette, and they say the bus is leaving right now. So he just sucked the whole thing down. Like, right well, now. You, know, you know what's you know funny what about I mean? Zuby? I'll a- tell you. What was funny about Zuby is he always denied smoking. Like, he denied it. I mean, his t- his teeth look like a yellow crayon, first of all, or a brown crayon. I'm like, Zuby, <laughs> Jesus, I can smell you. I sit next to you. You're my partner. Uh, but But it was funny. Like, after games, he'd be the first guy undressed. First guy undressed, right to the shower. Yeah. And... And he'd go in there and have a couple darts. 
first he had a beer in there. The trainers had a beer in there for him, you know, to hide it and stuff like that. Yeah. Had a beer. Yeah. But and he'd come out of the shower and I'd be like, Zoop, Jesus, you can't even wait to get outside to have a cigarette. I wasn't smoking. I said, yeah, you were. He goes, no, Lutz, I was not smoking. I said, Zuby, <laughs> we're all sitting in here and it looks like there's a three alarm fire coming out of the fi- out of the shower. The smoke is just rolling out of there and we can all smell it. But when you watch him. When you watch the way the guy played, he never got tired. He seemed to go faster east-west was the way his stride was, and, and just patient and calm. I, I would offer him in the morning, I said, Zuby, you want me to go get you a couple pack of cigarettes for the game tonight? I was offering him to go buy him cigarettes. Just, <laughs> it was like an oxygen tank to him, you know? And um, But, he, yeah. you know, those are those yeah. are just special people that that uh, I, I don't know if training, uh, and I, I don't think anybody ever gave him enough credit how strong he actually was because he didn't – he didn't necessarily play the game. He didn't have to play the game with strength all the time and knock guys off the puck and fight in front of the net and in the corners because he always had the puck for the most part. But when he did go into the corner, some people, they didn't come out. He usually came out of there with the puck. So um, those are special athletes. Yeah. And again, I know you've you, you've seen a lot of those guys um, you know, through your thing. Thank you to Herman Marshall Whiskey for sponsoring another episode of Suds with Luds. Herman Marshall produces small batch, handcrafted, and award-winning whiskey, patiently aged in new white oak barrels. Whether it's their Texas bourbon, Texas rye, Texas single malt, or their blended bourbon whiskey, all are built from the grain up, just like good whiskey should be. Make sure you ask for it by name. Thank you again, Herman Marshall Whiskey. So my first gig... The first day I came into Fox Sports Southwest and we were going to do, I was going to do an intermission thing. And I believe it was Jeff Moore, I think at the time, had called me up in the morning and he said, hey, Luz, can you can you run over to to Fox and do the pregame show? And I think it was yourself and Dana. And I got over there. I said, yeah, sure, I'll go over there. So we get in there and then. You guys wanted to do a dry run kind of thing to start with. And um said, okay, yeah. so <clears throat> we do the little dry run thing. And you guys made a comment to me. And anyway, go on the air. We, we you know, we do the first, uh, the first hit there. And <clears throat> it's over. And I, I looked and I said, thanks. And I stood up and I took my mic off. And I was getting ready to go. And I I don't remember who said something to who. One of you two, like, where's he going? And and then I think it was you that said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm getting out of here. He goes, what do you mean you're getting out of here? I said, I'm taking off. He says, well, no, you're doing the show. I said, oh, I didn't know that. He, I said, and he just came over and I thought I was just doing the first intermission with you guys or, you know, the opening of the show, whatever it was. And he goes, what did they tell you? I said, nothing. They just asked if I could come over and, and you know, do the Fox thing tonight. He said, Dutch, you're our analyst this year. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, you're here all year long. I had no clue. Like Jeff didn't say anything to me. He just said, you know, can you tonight you got time to go over there and do it. And so I had no idea. And, and to be yeah. honest with you, I absolutely loved it. I just thought um, to be able to sit yeah. there and what people don't see a lot of times is the guys that work behind the scenes during the period that cut the clips for you. Yeah. Um, it's so different. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, what, what it really does and having to had – uh, dip my toe in the water a little bit with Razor and and to see how those guys work and study and the knowledge that they have and how it happens right now. And so, you know, I thought, well, this ain't going to be that hard. I mean, and I was only going to do, I think, road games and uh, to start with. But but anyway, but my problem was when when I was doing it, I'm like, oh. Yeah, well, I know everybody in the league. Well, let me tell you, when when yeah. all of a sudden you have to start talking about number 23 from Anaheim, and I'm like, I don't know who number 23 is. It, it was just an eye-opener for me. And yeah. I had to start, when, when one game was over with, I would write down every number and every name of the upcoming game that we were going to do. And I carried it in my car. I carried it everywhere I went to be able to study the name and number. That was my hardest part about that whole thing is always feeling. And I, but I just, I mean, I knew Razor's the best in the business, but I didn't understand it until you start working yep. with the, with a guy. And, and he was so good with me, but, but to be able to, and we all know he's a, he's a wordsmith and, um, but to yeah. be able to pull that stuff off and the timing, and and I don't think he, I mean, I think he sleeps well at night. I couldn't sleep. I, I just, I was scared shitless every time I had to yeah. do, do the thing. I was scared the right. morning all day long. I was scared. Right. It was worse than when I played. Well, it, 
Yeah, it's because it's it's just all that preparation. You know, uh, uh, Razor's been doing that prep for years and years and years, and it's just second nature. But when you're doing that prep, and it, and it got me, same thing when I was doing play-by-play for the Rangers, man. You know, I had done broadcasting for 25, 30 years at that point, and I started doing play-by-play for the Rangers, and like you, I was having trouble sleeping. I'm getting up in the middle of the night mm-hmm. writing down names and stats about guys, so I always have enough to say and the right thing to say. And, yeah, it's a it's a bigger animal than, than people think to be a part of the actual live broadcast of a professional sporting event. But I, I thought – you and Razor together, you guys sounded great. You guys did an excellent job together. And, and you know, that's a tall order for Razor to switch from analyst to play-by-play. But uh, but you filled in beautifully doing that, doing that analyst well, let job. Let me tell too. you, there was a couple times Razor would, uh, you know, he'd, he'd be calling the play. And then he'd kind of continue on talking. And, you know, Razor, he can, he can, he can go. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I was getting ready to say something. And I just kind of sit back and I just sit back in the chair and oh, I just well. listen to him and he'd get, and he'd get done and we'd go to break and he'd go to break and he'd go, Oh shit, Les, I'm sorry. I just got on a roll. I said, I said, <laughs> no, I love listening. I've always loved listening to him. I said, nope. Uh, because my biggest thing was, well, I had a few big things obviously, but I always was thinking about what would Razor say? How would he describe the play? And, and you know, and he kissed that yeah. I'm like, I can't do that. I, you know, I just, so anyway, um, so what, tell me, uh, let's get away from this, this club. They haven't started yet. I think their training camp starts on the 21st. Dallas stars do. And I think I saw the other yeah. day, they got a game down yeah. in Austin on the 23rd. What, what are your feelings on Dallas Cowboys? I mean, do they, is this the year that do they have the parts and can Dak, you know, get there. I, I know that the coach is now running the offense. And, and so everybody seems to be pretty pumped up about that. Your feelings. I feel like that this is the year and I feel it for a lot of reasons. Let's first of all, that, uh, that offensive philosophy change, right? That West coast offense is and they're calling it the Texas coast offense, but whichever uh, that, that is so suited to someone like Dak Prescott, right, where it's just a quick decision and go. And it's not waiting to try and throw a deep ball and all these check downs and all that stuff. You know, you've got 10 seconds less, way less, to just go, bang, here it is, ball, you know. And I love that. Uh, the other reason I think that it's it's going to work is that that defense is so good. And, and whenever the Cowboys have been really good, it has really started with defense. You go back to the 70s, it was the doomsday defense. You go back to the 90s, Jerry Jones had that famous quote where he said, Jerry said, we couldn't even spell Super Bowl around here until we got Charles Haley, right? That was a, a defensive presence right on the on that defensive line and then this defense with Micah Parsons uh, leading the way and all of the work that he has done to get to where he is it's an unbelievable unit and they like that 90s group they'll rotate a defensive lineman in and out of there with with regularity which keeps everybody fresh uh, I, I think they've got a and and Beyond all that, Dak's got more weapons uh, relative to the number of receivers that are out there and able to, you know, able to make a good catch for him. So um, I think this might be the year. Um, you're, you're always hesitant to say that they're going to make the Super Bowl, but I think they're definitely going to be in the hunt for a Super Bowl until the end of the season. I was so fired up just now when you mentioned Charles Haley's name because I went. Oh, wait a second. So I just pulled up, as you were speaking, I pulled up a text I got from Charles about a month ago. And he's have, he has a golf tournament yeah. today at, that goes on uh, oh. over at the Texas, uh, what's it called, Texas Star? No, not Star. What's the, what the Cowboys? Yeah. Cowboys uh, Country Club over there. Oh, yeah. And it says, Luds, I need you at my golf tournament. And I just looked it up just now, and it says September 13th. <laughs> so, so I obviously, Oops. sorry, Charles. I was just going to say, we need to get Charles yeah. on the show here now. <laughs> so I, I better send him a text yeah. message. I, I was in Wisconsin when I got it. I forgot about it till just now. So, Chuck, I just want to apologize to you right now. I missed your golf tournament, but uh, well, that's good to hear. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, the Cowboy fans, uh, regardless of the team, they they seem to think they're going to win a Super Bowl every year. But I would think they would be getting used every to it, year, right? right? So, yes. Um, yeah, and you know what? That's one other. That's one other thing that's different, Luds, is that like. You know, I was co- I was on the Cowboys beat for ten or twelve years, and then you know I've co- covered them somewhat. Uh, you know, ever since 
I've never, ever seen beat writers for the Cowboys until this year. I've heard beat writers actually saying, I think this team could go to the Super Bowl. Beat writers never say that, but that's how good they think this team uh, is, at least in the construction of the team at this point. And certainly week one did nothing to dispel that. But, um, you know, that sometimes that's like, you know, that's like a seven nothing game in hockey. Yeah. Sometimes you go, ah, we just got rolling. You know, we just got yeah, rolling. Yeah, we used to, when we first got to Dallas, when we first, uh, when the team ro- located here, you know, we were over there at Valley Ranch. And ironically, right now, our room um, that with our U18 team is our same locker room that we had when we moved in there. So I'm in there, oh, yeah, wow. I'm in there every day wow. now. So I still get haunted. Haunted by Hitchcock, yeah. and I think he's still walking around in there. But yeah. um, <clears throat> we yeah. would always, after practices, we were like, well, where the hell are we going to go? We went up the street to Cowboys Cafe, and that's where they all were all yeah. the time also. So we got to know a bunch of the guys and got to hang out with them, and then, you know, back and forth to different games and things like that. I remember there early, we were sitting there, and, and uh, Step, Stepnowski was there. Uh, I think Tune was there. Daryl Johnson was there. And we were having a few beers and having lunch and stuff like that. And, and a couple guys came in, and they were huge. I mean, just huge and and ripped and huge. And I I looked at the guys and I said, who is that? And, you know, they walked kind of over in the corner. We were sitting in front. They walked over in the corner. I saw the three of them look at each other. And they said, is that? No, is that? And I'm thinking, wait a second. You guys don't know who they are? And they're like, no, they're on the defense. We don't know who they are. And it was my first time. And I played ball and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, how do you guys not know who your teammates are? The 53 guys, right? Or 52, whatever it is. But I think you you kind of saw that there was a – the offense does their thing and, you know, the defense does their thing. And I was kind of shocked that they didn't, it was funny. All three of them were asking each other. We used to go over to Troy's house and uh, play blackjack on, I think it was uh, Tuesday or Wednesday nights over there, Troy's. So it, it was, yeah, oh, okay. it was nice. Yeah. Uh, Russ Cortnell and Churla and myself. And, but I'll tell you what, Troy never had any popcorn or peanuts or beer or nothing. We had to keep going back to our place <laughs> to get beer and stuff and bring it back to Troy's house. So that's why he's as good as well, he is, I guess. Now, now it, nowadays he'd give you his own beer. He's got I know that, that. that beer. No, I, I heard it's really good, know, too. I yeah. tried to get it over here at the Kroger store, but I think it's uh, the other one. Uh, I don't know. There, I, he must have a deal that only certain stores sell it because I tried finding it at Kroger a couple months ago. So, Troy, if you're listening, which he's not, um, John yeah. and Luds would yeah, like some maybe beer. We yeah. Need to get him. yeah, we'd like to get Jake and sponsor. Yeah, maybe we'll get him to. Yeah, get Eggman to sponsor the Suds. See, with you lunch, have you know? all those contacts, all the people that have beer and and booze hooked up to them, and uh, you know you, you got to get on that. You want to be part of this gig? You know, you know what makes a, you know that we need some gas to run this <laughs> show. Yeah. Uh, okay. How about yeah, the Rangers? Yeah, how about Texas good. Rangers? Give me that. Well, I mean, what the hell? They started out on fire. Uh, I, I had Gavin Spittle uh, got us the suite. Uh, Kim and I went over there for a ball game. And speaking of Gavin, I'm gonna. Uh, apparently, Kim was texting him, and so we're going. He got us into uh, uh, a suite for the Pink concert. <clears throat> so I'm, oh, yeah, God. exactly. That's what I said when she yeah. told me. Um, but well, anyway, yeah, what a beautiful yeah. building. Uh, we were in there. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, but they started out yeah. hot, didn't they? And uh, Nick put some runs up. Oh. Yeah, they really can. They've got a great offense. Uh, right now, you know, it's missing two key cogs in that. You know, the, the RBI leader in the in the American League when he went out, you know, Adolis Garcia got hurt with his knee last week against the Astros. And Josh Young's been out for a month or more uh, with that with that wrist and thumb injury. So, you know, they'll get those two back. They'll be even better offensively. Um, but, you know, Jonah Heim is back, it appears. He, he, you know, struggled for his first month off of that wrist injury injury and uh he he appears to be back which really helps that offense so you know i think the offense is going to remain good and and maintain what it is the only concern you know and again it's not like i'm breaking news here the only concern you have as as they head down this stretch the final three weeks is just can the the pitching hold up last night it looked very bad with max scherzer going out of the game with uh, uh you know, forearm uh, or yeah, triceps or forearm uh, uh, spasms, right? And he even said after the game, it feels like when something's acting up in your forearm, you know, your body is all connected and he fears it's the elbow, right? I mean, and if it's the elbow, you know, that could mean Tommy John surgery and all of it. So um, you don't want to get ahead of yourself on that stuff, but that's, that's what he's implying. That's what he fears. So you, you hate that. They got an ace. They did the front office did such a great job. They got an ace in the offseason, Jacob DeGrom. 
he goes out with an elbow. They went at the trade deadline, and they get another ace in Scherzer. I just hope he doesn't. I hope there's some other way to avoid that. But obviously, down the stretch, that's what they're going to need is pitching, and and they're going to need you know help uh, in the bullpen. The deeper the rotation is, the better the bullpen is. So hopefully, you know, if they can keep these guys healthy and keep that pitching going, I think the offense is coming back. It'll be back to what it was. Now, do you do you do much with the Mavs? I mean, are you? I mean, you in tune with the Mavs like you would be for the Cowboys and Rangers? Uh, typically, I haven't been quite as much, but uh, I I have been um, very interested in this off season. Again, with a little more time and stuff. I mean, this is what I love. This is what I do. Is all the sports, you know? So um, not not quite as in tune, but I'm very interested to see. And I love Jason Kidd. I mean, I was uh, I was on that beat when when he got here as a player. And uh, and I've I've talked to Jason several times since he's been the coach. I, I love that team. And look, when you start with Luka Doncic, you know yeah. you're starting with a lot right there. And and now uh, Kyrie Irving has signed up. I think the Mavericks did a great job in the off season by. You know, they didn't have to give him a max contract, right? They they were able to sign him up with less, uh, you know, commitment, if you will, without, you know, sort of mortgaging the future. And now you got three years to figure out if he and Luca uh, can, you know, can work together. It's a difficult task um, when you have superstars, more than one superstar on a team. You know, your team had two. It had Madonna and Hall. And that that worked, you know, but it's tough to have superstars coexist sometimes. Well, you know what? I, I think for us, and I, I would not not disagree with you, but I would throw in a couple more names. Zubov was a superstar. Joe Newendike was a superstar. Sure. Ed Belfort. And it, it's it's crazy to think that at that time, you know, but again, the, 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 sal, the, the salary cap wasn't the same. And so, you know. Mr. Hicks could go in there and negotiate with Brett Hall and, and you know, they can hear what do you need and walk over there with a blank check for the most part. Um, but yeah, but what we, what we had, I think what we had at that time, and I've talked about this so many times, we had a general manager by the name of Bob Ganey that, that knew the personalities, knew the kind of personalities that he played with, with an iconic organization like the Montreal Canadiens. And he knew the chemistry that was important. Everything off the ice was probably more important than what was going on the ice, uh, you know, because they got to get along. When you bring in those kind of personalities, they you have to find guys that were the the ultimate goal is more important than the, than the personal one. And, and it was about the chemistry, and yeah. we're all in it for the same same reason. And you know, and then you start bringing in guys like Mike Keen and Brian Scrudlin, Guy Carbono, guys that all team guys, right? And so we were able to. I think what what our strength was in the room was we had a group of us that were able to pull everybody for the common the common goal kind of thing. So that worked out well. I, I would say that if there's anybody that can pull off that kind of stuff, it's having an owner like Mark Cuban. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think he's got that together, and I think that um, that uh, at some point everybody realizes that. You know, obviously Holly and Mo were were absolutely pulling on the rope in the same direction. As was Nui. You mentioned Nui. I mean, my gosh, you're right. There's another. There's uh, offensive superstars three on the same team, right? And then you've got Zuby, who you mentioned. You know, that defensive superstar, and you can't do any of it amazingly without Eddie. Uh, you know, at the back there. So it's it's an amazing thing when you can get that many Hall look, of Famers. They're superstars for a reason. Right. They're Hall of Famers and they can all uh get get kind of get rid of the ego, yeah. you know, for the for the whole season. And then certainly for the long playoff run, it's not about me, right? It's about us. And if you get to that point, uh man, that's that's when you can have some tremendous team success with multiple superstars. Well, Rats, you got anything you want to talk about? Like, who are, who are the guys you're bringing on to? Now, you know what? We're going to change this name. It's not going to be Suds, Suds with Luds. I, I think it's going to be Rads. It should be Rads and Suds with Luds because you, you've you got the pull to bring in some. Just as long as you can do this every single time, as long as you get some kind of booze guy or, or uh, you know, some beer, some beer guys <laughs> in here. How about golf? How about golf? Are you well, golfing well, yet all the time? You're a big golfer, no, aren't you? No, you know, it was so – yeah, but it was so hot this summer, yeah. Luds. I just I, I played a little, but gosh, it was so. And now the weather's turning, so I may I may have to sneak back out there. But it it, it wasn't it just wasn't fun. Yeah. 
you know, to get out there and sweat so bad and everything's, you know, you know, everything's dry. And if you get it off the fairway at all, it's gone. You know, so I, uh, I did not play nearly as much as I would have liked given that I had more time than I've ever had. Um, but it was, it was just a bad summer for that, you know, but, uh, but I still love it. You know, I played, um, you know, last uh, road trip I was on with the Rangers. I played and we were in Tampa and, uh, we played there, me and, uh, you know, uh, you know, Vito and then, uh, and Dave Raymond, the play by play guy for the Rangers. We went out and played and of course had a few beers and had a good time. So, uh, yeah. Imagine, you yeah. know, we've we've talked uh, amongst ourselves, and um, yeah, as you're talking, I'm thinking like because you're you're so versed, obviously, in everything. And we've got Nate and Isaiah, football players, and you got Harp at the NBA. You mentioned you with the the MLB, and we've talked about taking this show on the road. I just think this would be something yeah. where, and you can like you can talk to all of us and we could uh, I, I'm sure we could. And I think you'd have the ability to pull out a couple stories out of some of these guys. And, and now I'll tell you one thing, though, you wouldn't have to work very hard because because some of the right. stories no. that came out and one of the things that we did earlier last year, I think it was right when we all first got together, we kind of did a thing where we were going to kick this whole thing off. Like there were a lot of things that needed to be taken out of that show because the stories were coming out, but they right. were good stories. So I really, really really look forward. I mean, as much as I know we all want ballots to get it straightened out, <laughs> you're able to do this. I'm like, ah, let's kick the can down the road for a few months. And so, uh, but it would be awesome. Yeah, no. And I, you know what, I think, I think Luds that what this has done for me is opened a, um, a door on a, cause look, I'm going to be freelance for Bally now, right. Instead of a full-time employee. So yeah, let, let, let's put it this way. I won't feel quite as um, beholden, yeah. right to a, a to an employer there right i'm a free agent i'm a freelancer and so i love doing stuff like this this to me is is fantastic this is what we did for 10 years or however many we did it um where we were sitting there watching hockey games every night at the uh you know when we were watching them at the american airline center up in a suite there with tommy coming by and all that and candace you yeah know, take, taking us care of us here. yeah so <laughs> Yeah, take care of us. And then, uh, so, but anyway, these are the kind of conversations we had then. This is what I love, you know, and and I think, I think that, you know, the viewers are, are going to love this kind of talk too, and especially your stories. And to your point, all of them, Menchie's stories, uh, uh, you know, Harp's stories, and, and obviously Nate's. I mean, there's a lot there. And uh, I'd love to I'd love to be a part of that, that deal like you were talking about. That's well, fun. let's just be clear. They don't get you. I get you. You're with me. <laughs> we'll let them know. They can go ahead and find their own John Radigan. I, I want this one. Uh, Rad, I, I am super excited. I appreciate you jumping on today. And uh, do you got all your, your setup over there? You got there. Are you doing this by your iPhone or you got your lights and camera? And stuff? Yeah, this this just no, nah, this is my phone. Okay. Yeah, this is my phone. Yeah. Right, well, so maybe next time you'll be better. Well, okay. we'll get, if you when you get all the professional yeah. stuff, you'll be better. Uh, you you got to get yeah, you got to get yeah. more polished up. You're not very polished right now. You don't know yeah. enough about every single yeah, sport exactly. in Dallas. So, uh, yeah. well, Reds, yeah. I, I'm super happy. Like I said, um, I am really, really looking forward to this. I think I think people will enjoy uh, your wealth of knowledge and everything, and they don't always have to listen to me go on and on and on about the stars and and uh, living in the past all the time with me. So uh, it's it's awesome. And uh, here's our here's our comeback episode, I believe for. Uh, it is no longer Suds with Luds. It's going to be Rads and Suds with Luds. And uh, we will, I promise you, we will live up to the name. So if there's anybody out there who wants to have a show on the road, uh, we're available. We'll do All it. Right. We'd love it. Thanks, yeah. Rads. Super. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.